first. No more the prices empty. No more traffic in the streets. All the builders to the silence. No more time to harvest weeds. Busy housewives cease their labor in the cold room of the place. Work no work is all suspended. As the king comes to the gate.
ever since we've been there, we've heard about the last days. Matter of fact, Paul uh, preached about that many times. He told Timothy and wrote all the epistles and about how the last days were here. Now the last days started when Jesus was on this earth. Because in chapter number 24, if you'll turn to Matthew 24, we'll see what Jesus said about it. Then we'll go on to the, uh, see what Paul said about it in 2 Thessalonians in a minute. All right, the offering was $465. Amen. And, uh, but let's see what Jesus says. Some things that, that he tells us about the last day. Now here's the thinking behind this church. Uh, I know grandpa's have came and gone, most of them. Most of us elderly came and gone. Hmm. I'm getting in that elderly group. I used to say all those young ones. You, know, you remember how it was? <laughs> Everybody else was older, but now here we are. And uh, we've heard this all of our lives. But this generation right here has seen more come to pass than any generation has ever lived. This generation right here. Brother Richmond, I guess he's an elder of the church. And uh, he's seen more than anyone. And you know what's amazing? The kids don't understand what uh, what we understand. See, I'm, I'm only uh, I'm only 62 years old. Junior's 42. Hmm. How old are you? 39. <laughs> well, and then Joey's 22. Uh, <laughs> uh, Joey, how old are you? 38. 38. You've seen a lot of drastic times even in your short lifetime. I'm 62. I've seen a lot. Brother Kenny's 72. No, he's 67. Right? He's seen more than I've seen. I'm just saying that the older we get, Mr. Janey, brother, uh, 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 brother Bob, and everyone sees more than the other person. So the older people can really, really understand this better than the young ones can. Now you take these little kids, like grandkids' age, they don't have a clue. The freedom that we had, that we had when we was kids. The freedom to just run out books. The freedom, now I know bigger cities has been different from the rural country. I'm talking about us. Matter of fact, time is all over America the same as it is here. Just because you live in a bigger city, back then you could let your kids out in your front yard and be safe in the big city, like Chicago. Now you can't let them get out and see, even those people see the difference. Even the big city, the, the, they call them the inner city kids. In the heart of the cities where nobody knows what goes on, but, but some drastic news story. And uh, so we, there has been a change like the world has never seen, since, especially since 1948. Now I was born in 1951. But how many years of, of can I say just fearless living? Man, we didn't have no problems. You could let your kids run. We could go wherever we want to, uh, do wherever we want to. And, and it wasn't until probably till I got in junior high that I began to see some changes start. Matter of fact, looking back at 1962, I believe it was. We was in, I went to the junior high before they cut out, I just I think I just got to junior high before they cut out prayer to school. They wouldn't let you pray. They wouldn't let the principal get on the intercom and pray more. Uh, now see, I remember that well, because I was 11 years old. Well, I was still in junior, I'm just still in junior school, wasn't uh, uh, and, and just the freedom that we've had, uh, that all that's gone. Man, we can't let our teenagers get out on the streets tomorrow without fear of them being dope, drugged up by some drink. Uh, be under their control. The next thing you know, uh, all they're spaced out and uh, boy, it feels so good. The world, the devil has 
that's such a good feeling that, boy, once they've been on it, they want another dose. We've seen some drastic times happen in our lifetime. Jesus said here in Matthew 22, verse 1, Jesus went out and departed from the temple, and His disciples came to Him for to show Him the buildings of the temple. And Jesus said to them, See ye not all these things? Verily I say unto you, There shall not be left here one stone upon another that shall not be thrown down. Now that's a twofold meaning. They destroyed the, the they destroyed Israel. The, the the enemy did. And this verse two is the, the the part two of that meaning is that Jesus was going to die for our sins. He was going to be completely destroyed. Jesus is our temple. Jesus is our, our hope. Uh, and then verse three, as he sat down upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Then he asked the next question, and What shall be the sign of that coming and of the end of the world? Now he tells them a two-part meaning right here. He tells them the sign of His coming and the end of the world. I just want to concentrate on the, time, the sign of His coming. Verse number 4. Jesus said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. Buddy, I'll tell you what, our faith, the first sign is our faith is going to be tested. The first sign was those disciples' faith was going to be tested. What did Paul tell about the Galatians, I believe it was? I'm shocked, surprised, they're so soon departed from the truth. If any man preach any other gospel, let him be accursed. Baron, Iron Man, whatever that word is. Baron. But he said uh, the first warning is uh, take heed that no man deceive you. Well, we got we got so many denominations running around here today. You know, it's got down to like the missionaries overseas. The first one that gets to them, that's what they're gonna believe. That's reason it's important. Amen. The same people out across the world. But that's exactly what the other denominations think. They're blinded. But there's only one gospel. And that's the death, burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That's the only gospel. Buddy, that's it. Uh, there's no other uh, name upon which whereby men must be saved but the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord, is still King and Lord of Lords. It's not how well you pray. It's not how much money you give. It's not even the church you go to. First thing, we must be born again. Take heed that no man deceive you. Look here, verse 4 5. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, shall deceive me. <coughs> You'll get on the internet. Google up how many people claim to be Jesus. It'll blow your mind. Do that homework. It'll give you names of people. It comes out and they say, I'm Christ, I'm Jesus. So a lot of times we don't hear a lot of that. But, but you just go ahead and Google it up. See what you can find. And I know you get a lot of garbage on the internet. I'm, not, I'm just talking about doing some serious study. Uh, the second time, be sure come saying, I'm Christ. Well, here's one we're familiar with right here. Listen, there's always been wars. In the Old Testament, there was battles. There's always been fights and wars and battles. But nothing like we see now. It's all over the continent. Every nation. I'm talking about the last days. Why am I concerned about the last days? Because listen, our lifetime is when Jesus... I'm, I'm, not a, I'm not a sinner, but I'm going to take the God's Word to show you where Jesus said, this is the generation that God's going back. Jesus is telling us this out here for things to take heed of. He said, uh, verse number 6, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. <coughs> How many Bibles? I've got a notation written down in my, in my when I studied this years ago. Uh... About the battles, I won't take time to, I won't take because the numbers are not accurate. Way, 
Get their, their antique by now. But uh, you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. I, 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 listen, uh, verse number 7, Nations shall rise against nations, kingdoms against kingdoms, and there shall be famines. <laughs> There's two kinds of famines today. There's a famine of uh, uh, people starving to death. You know, you can watch TV and they'll show some poor, pitiful kids. I mean, to, just starving to death. But can I tell you, people are like that in America today. There's children that are being starved to death, even as we speak, because mom and dad are out just running, having a good time. Kids are staying at home and not having food to eat. But he said, uh, but there's famines uh, and pestilences. Now this word pestilence, <coughs> if you look it up in the, the, in the, 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 uh, the dictionary, it means a contagious and infectious epidemic disease that is very violent. That kind of describes AIDS, don't it? AIDS is kind of on the back burner these days because there's so much of it. When AIDS first come out, boy, that was a big deal. Everybody was afraid of getting AIDS. Now there's so many diseases and and pestilences and viruses that people don't pay a lot of attention to AIDS. Uh, and then it said there should be earthquakes in diverse places. That word diverse means various, different places. Earthquakes. <coughs> that's something else if you want to look at just do a Bible study. Uh, get on the internet and see how many earthquakes has taken place. How they've increased in population. In increased in numbers. Earthquakes everywhere. Earthquakes all over the place. Jesus said... Uh, as he sat with his disciples, uh, he was he said, uh, uh, "These things shall come to pass." I want you to look at uh, uh, verse number nine. That, then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted, and shall kill you. You shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. Now let's just concentrate on the good old U.S. of A. The world hates America. Most. Nations uh, are jealous because of the blessing that God has put upon uh, America. But here's the problem. We're not being favored highly anymore. Our nation is going the way of the world. Just like all nations have that have stood for God at one time. England, Ireland. God blessed. Our forefathers come to the, come to the continent of uh, 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 the North America instead the shit up on truth, uh, Bible scriptures, and uh, worship of God, uh, being thankful to Him, and God has blessed America. And God's still blessing America. Thank God for that. But I'm telling you, as more people turn back on God, God's beginning to lift His hand off of America. They ain't coming in. Why? Because Jesus said these things must come to pass. These things will come to pass. Verse number 11. Well, look at verse number 10. Then shall many be offended and shall betray one another and shall hate one another. Many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. Tell you, people don't know what to believe in these days because of so many televangelists, so many denominations. Whatever happened to what can wash away my sins? <laughs> Nothing but <other> Jesus. <coughs> Whatever happened to the good old days? Amen. When the Methodists preached the death, burial, and resurrection. <coughs> There's been such a denominational breakaway, amen, from the gospel that people don't know what to believe. It's more or less whoever reaches them first. But you know what we better do? We better pray for our children. We better pray that God puts His hand on our kids and our grandkids and keeps them safe, shelters them in the right direction. Verse number 12, Because iniquity shall abound. Boy, we're right smack dab in the middle of that verse. Iniquity shall abound. In my lifetime, these churches, amen, in Oakdale, I was talking to Brother Crumley. I saw him somewhere a couple of weeks ago and he was asking me about the church. 
He said, Brother Robin, how's the church? I thought some men at Burger King a couple of nights ago. And uh, he said, Brother Robin, how's the church doing? I said, it's doing good. But it ain't like it was in the old days. He said, I remember the old days down at St. Matthew. Remember the old building, the old St. Matthew before they got the one now? He said, packed out. They packed out crowd of service. <laughs> I'm telling you, people knew how to serve God because they loved God. They trusted God. They didn't trust in themselves. I mean, they didn't trust in the treasures of the world. They knew where their blessings come. Why? Well, they had grandmas and grandpas that told them about God, that brought them to church every Sunday morning, every Sunday night, every Wednesday night, prayed with them, taught them about God. Amen. Our generation has perished of God. If it were not so, you would see uh, you would see churches full. Instead of 15 to 40 to 50 people here, 30, 40, 50 people there. Instead of uh, 15 Baptist churches within 20 mile drive. Where's a where? Look here. Uh, uh, Nick with a shallow bottle. Look at the second part of that. And the love of many shall wax cold. You ever seen a time when you didn't care about no, people, just didn't care about no brothers and sisters? Now, the Bible said uh, that a brother is born for adversity. If you get two boys the same age, they're going to ball up five all the time. Amen. Uh, 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 but I believe once they come to their senses, get a little age on them, and, 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 and start uh, uh, believing in God, trusting God, all that will come to an end. A hey, brother is made for adversity. Even up after they get grown, you're going to have some difference of opinion. And I'm talking about, amen, the love of many shall wax cold. Let me give you a prime example. Tuesday, young boy in Oakdale, some 18, 19 years old, with his little five-year-old sister. Right here in Oakdale. Could you ever, I mean, I, I know that was probably went on uh, ever, you know, since ages, but listen, you hear that more every day. And it's, it's done come, it, uh, the chickens have done come to roost, amen. Even now I live there. And there's no telling how much of this is going on that nobody gets caught. The love of many, could you imagine raping your own little five or six year old sister? Verse number 14. Here's another reason we support missionaries. And this gospel of the kingdom. What is this gospel? The death, burial, and resurrection. This is what you must do to be born again. To have a place in heaven. To escape hell. This gospel. This Jesus that died for our sin. That loved the world so much. That He died for our sin. Went to Calvary. He suffered our equivalent in six hours on the cross that we would have to spend forever in hell. He suffered that. That's how much suffering that He did for us. When people go to hell, they, they, they die forever and ever and ever and there's no escape in hell. Jesus suffered this amount of every person that will ever be in hell. He suffered this equivalent on the cross in six hours. We can never imagine the pain, the agony. This was a physical pain. This was a spiritual pain. We know a little bit sometimes about a physical pain, but we don't know about spiritual pain. You remember, you remember I preached here a while back? Jesus said, Father, if it be thy will, let this cup pass from me. In the flesh, He was talking about the wounds, the scars, the nails, the spears, uh, the plucking of the beards. But on the spiritual side, He said, God, I've never committed adultery, but I'm going to be an adulteress for the sins of the world. I've never been, I've never uh, uh, been drunk on alcohol, but I'll be willing to be a drunkard. So therefore, I can forgive the sins of every drunkard that ever comes to me. Never been a harlot, but I'll be a harlot. Never been a druggie, but I'll be a druggie. That's a spiritual side that only Jesus could understand. We can't understand that. We know the physical side. Jesus was a sinless, perfect Son of God. Never committed adultery. Never was drunk. Never sinned. Never had a bad thought in his life. Never even, he was tempted. But thank God, he, he was God. And you can't tempt God. Amen. And he was willing spiritually to 
to be a, a be the same sinner as everybody else was for six hours on the cross so he could save the most vilest wicked sinner. He said, I'm not a rapist, but I'll bear the, the iniquity of a rapist. These people that rape their little sisters, if they will turn to me and be saved, I'll be a rapist. And I've never raped before in my life, but I'll suffer these spiritual sins for these people. My mind, only God's Son, Jesus, can do what no one else can do. He said, verse 14, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached around the world. Now we know that Jesus made Israel His signature nation. That was His people. God chose Abraham, called him out to hurl the Chaldeans. <clears throat> the Chaldeans were idolatrous. I mean, they was wicked, no good. God called Abraham out of out of uh, Ur of the Chaldeans. God knew Abraham had a heart that would listen, that would follow him. God used this man. He made him the father of the nation of Israel. And uh, the gospel started in Israel. Right in Baghdad. Right there where Baghdad is now. That's where the Garden of Eden was. All that belonged to the Jews back then. And then they had those two, the, two sons. Like Ishmael and Isaac, of course. Isaac followed God. Ishmael the wild man. He's Arab, the one that you know, they cover their face and all that. Uh, 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 and so, the, uh, the love story started in the Middle East. And he called these men. Paul was the greatest missionary of his time. And Paul started right around there. Jerusalem, Judea, Israel. And then it began to go north. And then it began to go west. And the gospel began to go west. And it came all the way west to the last western frontier, which is North America. Now, it swept through America. It's given America a chance. That's headed back to, someone told me last week, China is the, most, is the nation with the most conversions of any country in the world. China, people are being saved by the thousands in underground churches in China. Never knew that. I had a preacher preach on that uh, this past week. <clears throat> about how many thousands of souls are being saved in China. You know, China is in the... That's the Asian country. That's exactly where the gospel started. Look at verse 20, uh, 24 again. And this gospel of the kingdom, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations. Then shall the end come. Jesus is telling His disciples that the end... Uh, it's going to come when the gospel is covered in gold. Now, churches in America is sending missionaries to China. Churches in America are sending missionaries across the globe. There's not a person living that cannot say, I don't understand. Brother George preached on that the other day about the heavens, about the firmament. Anyone can look up and look at the creation of the world. And they're without excuse. Folks, I'm telling you, we've heard that Jesus is coming all of our lives. But we're there. Of course, Paul was preaching. We're there. But I'm telling you, no one has ever seen what we're seeing now. No one. And, and I, I, didn't even take, I didn't even think about calculating a timeline. Seven is a number of completion. You know, we're living in the last hours of the 6,000 year reign. I mean, since the beginning of time. The seventh, year, the seventh year of creation is right on the verge. The Bible talks about on the third day He's coming. See, Jesus resurrected on the third day. The Bible says that a day of a thousand years and a thousand years is a day with Christ. It's been, uh, this is the uh, year of 2013. Jesus uh, is on the way back. He's right around the corner. We've never seen it this close before. You say, preacher, why do you tell us that? Listen, you better get in. You better get your loved ones in. There's nothing left to keep Jesus from coming back. There's nothing. Mom, I mean, mom and dad, if Jesus was to come today, and Paul preached that, but I'm telling you, listen, we better, we better, we better be serious about this. Mom and dad saved by the blood of Jesus. 
children and grandkids don't care. There's going to be a separation one day. I mean, moms and dads, husbands and wives, sisters and brothers will be separated because some of them is believers, some of them is unbelievers. Some of them say, oh, I just wait till tomorrow. I'll wait till next week. I'll wait till I know I can live it. Listen, folks, it's close, it's close, it's close. Matter of fact, death could even be closer than the coming of God. We can't take a gamble on that. We can't take a we can't gamble on that. Look at verse number 32. Matthew 24, 32. Now I learned a parable. Jesus is still on the same subject. He's telling it as he sat, verse number three, upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him. They said, Tell us. And he said in verse number 32, he said, Now I learned a parable. A parable is a story, a picture story. Now learn a parable of the fig tree. Now Israel has always been called, resembles the fig tree in Bible history. Always. Israel was considered the fig tree. You remember when Jesus came out and he said, the, seen the fig tree there. Wasn't no fruit on it. He cast it down. He put it away. He was telling his disciples, listen, this is a picture of what I'm going to do to the Jews that do not believe me, to the people, whether you're Jew or Gentile. Jesus has died for our sins. He's going to heaven. We're all Jews in God's sight now. We're all equal. We're all, uh, 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 there's no big eyes and little Jews. Back in the Old Testament, uh, it was primary to the Jews. But if you look all down through the Old Testament, the strangers also had the same choice. The strength was that always could come in. He said, now learn a parable of the fig tree. When his branch is yet tender, putting forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Fig trees put on leaves in the early spring, does it not? Then the figs are ready to pick right now. Matter of fact, my sister called me the other day. Called my wife. Figs are ready. When is figs ready? Is it summertime outside? Pretty well summer outside, ain't it? The fig tree is a type and picture of Israel. Israel turned their back on God. In the book of Exodus. In the book of Exodus. And was scattered all over the world. Because God said, if you, said, I'll make you that. If you'll follow me, I'll make you the head. But if you don't, I'll scatter you before we to the world. Israel never had a place, never had a country. God started calling them back in 1946, 1947. Hmm. What year were you born, Brother Kenny? How about that? Brother, brother. What year were you born? 35. 35. How about that? <laughs> Woo! Ancient of age. I'm, I'm saying that as a good thing, brother. Uh, Richmond, amen. <coughs> he saw the time. Well, back then we didn't have a lot of news, did we? We didn't have a lot of TVs. Matter of fact, didn't have no TVs. Until the 1950s, well, the rich people had them in the late 30s and early 40s. Only the big shot rich, super, super rich people. Hey, us poor people got TVs in the 50s. You remember the black and whites? Hey, hey! Good morning, 47. 46. God had begun to bring the Jews back when he was just a little bit of baby. When your mama used to rock you in the crate. Probably in them old cotton field back in old too. That's when people knew how to work. Hey, Amen. I'm telling you, we live in a nation and our children don't know nothing but entertainment. From my kids to Joe's kids to your kids. How many of you have planted the garden and your kids have helped raise it? Let me, I'm going to raise your hand. Your kids are helping you raise it. Your kids are helping you raise it. You got them grandkids out there digging around? You got your kids out there digging around? You got your kids out there digging around? You know what they're digging around in? The toy pile. Mama! I'm tired of this antique games. They say, oh, we need to shave them. They look like Grandpa Beards. Let's go to Walmart. They got a new one just came out yesterday. 
And next week they're going to say they got a new one come out yesterday. The next week they got a new one come out yet. They constant. I got the grounds are so full of, of, of rich people's toys that the, the people in Mexico and across the world would love to get a hold to them. And we're not putting them in the trash. Why? Because our kids don't know nothing but entertainment. Now, I didn't like to work. No, no kid liked to work, but I'm thankful I had to. Yes, sir. Hey, I'm talking about it. 1947, God started bringing the Jews back. People, some, they'll, 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 they'll ask the Jew that's going today, today, right now, a lost Jew, and they ain't even saved. A Russian Jew. I mean, they're all over the world. God scattered them all over the world. They're here in the United States. There's some Jews that they say, I want to go back home. Why do you want to go back home? I don't know. I've seen them interview them. You've probably seen them. I don't know why I want to go back home. <coughs> There's something about Israel. That's my home. Until 1947, they didn't have a home. 1948, Israel became a nation. The fig tree budded in 1940 started budding, however you want to look at it, whenever God started bringing them together, the budding of the fig tree. Hey, listen, when you set a fig tree out, you put that little fig tree in there, and you water it in your garden, how are you going to do it? And when it gets to bloom, you cut your little sprout, and it starts budding out, it's a real tender plant. That's what Israel was in 1946, 1947. They begin to make a peace treaty. They give a piece of land over there in the Middle East that was swampy. That's another story I'm going to get into that. Amen. It's amazing what Jews can do when God's on their side. Can you, can you imagine uh, 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 no good land in Israel where it's nothing but water down in the swampy area? I don't understand all that. But uh, Ed Below, study some of Ed Below's history. He searched all that out. And uh, uh, Israel made things possible that nobody, everybody felt thought was impossible. And God brought Israel together in 1947. It became a nation in 1948. They had a place called home. That was the year you were born, Brother Kenny. 47, 49, 50, 51. Four years later, <coughs> a little boy was born to Nelson and Nelly. Israel was still just an infant nation. Verse 32, let's look at it now. Learn a parable of the fig tree. When you see the fig tree, you just think of Israel. When his branch is yet tender and put it forth leaves, you know that summer is nigh. Now, 1947, his branches was tender and put it forth leaves. And then you know that summer is nigh. Summer is a harvest time. Now, 1947 was the springtime of Israel. Can I tell you, in the year 2000, it's summertime in God's eyes with Israel. I want you to look at right here, verse number 30, 33. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near. That what is near? Well, let's go back to verse 3. And he sat down with the Mount of Olives. The disciples came to him privately and said, Tell us, what shall these things be? And what shall the sign of thy coming be? Go back to verse 30. Uh, uh, verse, uh, what was that? Verse 33. So likewise ye, when you see all these things. I'm talking about the budding of the fig tree. May 14th, 1948. 4 o'clock p.m. Israel became a non-recognized nation. Even though the world didn't recognize it. They become a nation. They had a place they could call their own. He said, when you see all these things, know that it is near even at the door. Know that what is near? The coming of Jesus. The end is near even at the door. 1948. God got a place for His people to come back to. You know, why did He, why did he call the nation of Israel back? Because Jesus said when he left, he's going to come back and plant his feet on the tree of olives, on the Mount of Olives. Now, he didn't have to have Israel back home to do that. He could have just wiped out everybody. Tanks, armies, Palestines, he didn't matter, the Russians, the Germans, it didn't matter. He made them. He can destroy them. But he's, when he left, 
on the Mount of Olives. He said, I'm going to come back. I'm going to plant my foot back on these Mount of Olives. Right in his nation. He's going to be the leader of his nation. He left the nation of Israel. He's going to return to the nation of Israel. That's the reason he's having Israel come back together. Right now, everything's prime. Everything's set. Yes, sir. They've got the leaders over there. The world hates them. The world hates Israel. Even the United States hates Israel today. The lost heathen does. Our president hates the nation of Israel. Why? Because he's a Muslim. Amen. He's got... I'm going to get to something a minute in closing. I believe where we at. Amen. Over now in, 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 in Second Thessalonians, we'll turn in just a second. I'm telling you, never been closer than we have today. Well, that stands to reason. Amen. He's coming back. He told the disciples, he said, when you see all these kind of things come to pass, and his disciples were over there scratching their head. Because Israel was still a nation at that time. Jesus was telling these disciples to where we in the year 2013 can understand what Jesus was talking about for the first time. In the 2000s anyway. We've seen things happen in our lifetime that the, the disciples could not understand when Jesus was walking around here. We're seeing it. We're witnessing it. The Bible said that, that, that when, when uh, at the end of time the dead's going to be walking around and people all over the world is going to see them. When I was in junior high, I said, how in the world is everybody going to see what's going on over in Israel? Well, we didn't have television. Well, a few people did. How in the world are we going to see all this? How's the world, not we, but how's the world we're going to be going? How's the world going to see all this death? All this wickedness? All this problem? This curse that God's going to bring upon the nation? Well, then here come the newscast here. Well, uh, 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 Ronald Reagan went into the Star Wars. Amen. Thank God for Ronald Reagan, part of God's plans. He put it started putting the satellites. Well, I'm sure they had some before he did, but he enforced it. Now you can see anybody all over the, any, any corner of the globe, you can see people. You can watch the news and see what's going on. God was telling this to his disciples. They did not understand. But today we can understand. The disciples, when they wanted to send a message, Paul would write a letter before Pony Express come over the scene. They'd send it on a ship. When America was formed, amen, and our loved ones back then would go over to Colorado, to Texas, amen, they had what they called express mail. Pony Express. Now ain't that amazing how far we've come. Everybody knows about the Pony Well, all right, these kids probably don't know what Pony Express is. They they've changed all our textbooks. They don't study American history anymore. They study modernism. Yeah, Look it up for yourself if you don't believe me. Right. They don't teach our Constitution. That, a lot of these things, that they just, that, they, that we got to cover the modern era. All of them are forgetting our heritage. Right. All right, so he says here, Verily, verily, verse number 34, This generation shall not pass away. How long is a generation? Well, let's look at our age today. Back then, different philosophers have different uh, 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 numbers of how long a generation was. I, I consider, what do we consider a generation? What, 20 years? I mean, I was 20 years old before I was eligible, you know, maybe get married and have a kid, some older, some more or less. This generation, what about the kid? You're here. You were born when God was putting Israel back together. You didn't know that, did you? I guess not. You're still in your mother's womb. <laughs> hey, hey, I'm telling you, folks, we live in a most special time of all the world's creation. We're living right smack dab in the middle of it. My grandmother, Sally Monk, she died, I forget, a few years ago. Time flies by. You know what year Granny died? 87? She lived... 97. 97? Hmm. My granny, I've told you this before, but listen, my granny used to ride a horse and buggy to church. They didn't have a Walmart. They'd ride, she'd ride a horse and buggy to Anderson Cloud's uh, grocery store, junkyard. Grocery store slash junkyard. Slash 
pelt. Animals, clean it. Amen. Where they skin animals. Where you ladies could go buy furs, put them on. Amen. Yes, that was your grandpa. I remember well. A little short, jolly, fluffy fella. Hey, you could go buy. You, 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 you could bring your junk iron. Then you could go. You could the next. You could go over to the grocery store. You could buy uh, some bread and an apple. Then you could go into the fur store. Well, they didn't have them kind of fur, but they ate man. If you wanted the fur, they eat your seventeen. Or if you wanted a possum, he'd sell you a possum. Bring it home, barbecue it up real good. Amen. My granny rode a horse and buggy. Amen. To Anderson Clouds uh, and saw a man on the moon in her lifetime. Ain't that amazing how much man is progress? The Bible said men is ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. You know why they got their they got their their sight set on money. They better set their sight on the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The money will do them no good. It's going to burn, baby, burn. Amen. All that stuff's going to burn. Verse 34 again. Verily, I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all these things fulfill. Brother Kitty, if I understand it right, your generation will not pass away. And I'm not setting no dates. I'm just setting what God has let America see in our lifetime. The fig tree, the budding of the fig tree. Learn the parable 32 of the fig tree. Learn the parable of the fig tree. No one can understand that except this generation. No one can understand that. Your, your grandpa couldn't understand this, Brother Kenny. Brother Richmond, your grandpa couldn't understand this. Oh, Brother J. Frank Lawrence couldn't understand this because there was no... Israel was not a nation then. Hmm. This generation shall not pass away. I'm not saying your direct life, Brother Kenny, I'm not saying that. But this generation, amen. My granny lived to be nearly 100 years old. If you live out old Brother Kenny, I hope you do. I hope you pass to Miss Sherry until the Lord comes back, amen. Amen. Miss Richmond, I hope you I hope you pass to Brother Richmond until the Lord comes back, amen. You know what could be the biggest miracle in our lifetime? <coughs> we could leave here alive and not dead. Can I tell you, nobody wants to die. Even though God gives us dying grace. How, how many times do we say, Woo, Brother Joey, I just can't wait to get there. Oh man, I want to go to heaven. I want to get out of this mess. Well, won't you take some cyanide and shoot it up your veins? Well, then you don't want to go. We lying to ourselves. Hey, that's how much people want to live. But you know, one of these days, I believe it's going to be our generation. We're going to take a plane air ride. That Bible said that he's going to catch away the saints. Well, they're going to catch away the dead first. Them people driving by a cemetery that's lost, had never been saved, they're going to look at cemeteries and then if they look fast enough and they don't blink, they're going to see the graves just, I don't know if they're going to burst open. God don't have to bust them open to let the saints come out. But the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then, it, then this lost person will be driving, going to the casino, want to give them a drink, you know, want to give them some alcohol, give them a thrill, waste his money. Amen. So he won't have no grocery money for his kids. He going to the casino lost his uh, ball in high wings and a safe person right ahead of him. God comes back and all of a sudden the car just out of control. Oh, just goes out to the rice field, splishy displays out, taking the bath. One goes this way. One goes that way. I remember that old song too. Huh? Hey, one they go this way. People will be going. They'll be calling the state troopers. Hey, something mighty crazy going on. At that time they see a 747 go, and the captain be a saint goes, Mew. right there where the other fellows be splashing and taking them out. And the, uh, the state troopers are going to be called out. Hey, something's crazy going on. Fox News going to rush on the scene. Man, it's something going on like this world has never seen. What's happening? Save people. Not having to die. God's calling them out of this world like that. He said, now see a parable. See a parable. What is this parable? 
this parable of the fig tree and the nation of Israel. I got so let, let me run let's 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 run to verse number 37. I gotta give you this. Don't go no farther. Verse 37. Well, verse 36, but that day and hour no man knoweth. That's reason I'm not a date setter. No, no, no man but the angels of heaven. Not the angels of heaven, but my father. Look at verse 37. Here's a sign of something else that's been going on. As the days of Noah were, so shall the coming of the Son of Man be. And the next verse explains what? Verse 37. Look here what was going on in, in Noah's day. You see, don't it look like our day? For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating. Have you ever seen so many eat shops in the world? I mean, you want to eat here, eat there, everywhere, eat, eat. No wonder old MacDonald had a farm, amen. They had to kill more. I hear it. I Cluck, cluck there. I mean, any kind of food you want to eat? Go to Chinese restaurant, but they got more chickens fixed so many ways you don't know what in the world you eat, amen. <laughs> And you still might not know what you eat. One thing about it, you can eat all you want. And when you leave there, you'll be a miserable fellow. You know him like I am. I tell myself every time I go to a buffet, myself, contain yourself. And I fail the test. Hey, here's what they said that's going to be in the last days. As the days that were before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, Brother Kenya, did you know what divorce meant when you was a little baby? Brother Richmond, probably had never heard the word divorce, had you? Brother, brother, brother Bob, divorce, huh? Now this young generation is raised in divorces. Hmm? There's a doctor in town that I learned about 10 years ago. I don't know if you got the family left, I'll tell you his name. Tell you where he used to live, right behind the Ford place. That old doctor, you know what I'm talking about? I ain't going to say his name, so I ain't going to be held liable. Had a shady. Now, now let me say this to him or his son. The reason I know I got a personal friend that was that, 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 that had a, that this family rejected because. And they kept it quiet and they hid it and shunned it. Made them leave the territory because divorce was a terrible thing back then. Ray Gasson, a good friend of mine, asked me, did I know such and such name? I said, yes, I know him well. He's two years older than I am. That's the dude. Could I see what I'm saying, folks? He's two years old than I was. So in 48, the word divorce was a cuss word. It was a cuss word. It was a shameful word. Today, divorce is everywhere. Huh? What am I saying? Jesus told his disciples the day is going to come when they're marrying and giving in marriage. They're marrying. You know what marry means? When a couple comes together, whether they're married or not, in God's eyes, they're married. Now, if you, if any person in here has ever had a sexual uh, a, a, a relation with any man or woman, God's side, you're married. Whether you've got this piece of paper or not, that don't mean do little squat to God. Do you know what's good about it? If you ask God to forgive you, He don't even know that you've been married twice. <laughs> now, ain't that good? Ain't that good? Yeah. Son, only God can be like that. Yeah. Amen. Only God can be. Man, I'm telling you, that's good. I like a God that every time you say, Lord, I pray that you would forgive me of that, He said, what in the world are you talking about? He don't know. Hey, he said they were marrying and giving in marriage. I hit on this a few weeks ago. You know what the word giving in marriage means, huh? That's extra marital sex. Giving in marriage. It was 
going on in the days of Noah, it's going on today. Run over to 2 Thessalonians as we close with this thought this morning. I was going to preach out of 2 Thessalonians, but I believe I'll just use this as a word. <coughs> Folks, this is how close we are. Get your loved ones in. Plead with them. Beg with them. Do whatever it takes. Look at 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse number 2. Let's just go ahead and read verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto Him that you not soon, not that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us, as that the day of Christ is at hand. How about that? This is Paul to the Thessalonians. He said, be not soon shaken. The day of Christ is at hand. That's 2,000 years ago. He was saying it. Paul didn't know about the budding of the fig tree. Paul didn't know of the things that we know today. Look <laughs> right here. He said, verse number 3, Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come, here we go, except there come a falling away first. Have you ever seen the nations in a fix of the order today? Have you ever seen Christians, families, godly families in such turmoil as you have today? Have you ever seen such rape and incest as you have today? Listen, drinking has always been here, but now people don't care. They don't try to hide it. Adultery's always been here. People just don't care no more. All these things have always been here. <coughs> Homosexuality has been here ever since the days of Genesis. <coughs> but who woke, who that woke Abraham? My name's a blur. Noah, when it, Noah woke, see what his son had done to him, talking about Cain. And he told Cain, he said, uh, he, he, he said, your children shall be cursed. Why? Because he had a sexual act with his daddy. That was the first homosexual action in God's Word. Not Cain. I'm going to help you. Who is it? Ham! I tell you, Ham! <coughs> when Noah walked and realized what Ham had done to him, what was wrong with Noah? Noah was drunk. Drinking's always been here. Ham was the first sodomite in God's Word and he was cursed. You go home and look up what his first son's name was and you determine what nationality that is. Alright? Hey! But back then, amen, they hid it. Today they don't care. They're coming out advertising. Hmm. Right here, a falling away first. You got a church? That's where we at. First, the last part of verse 3. The day shall come, except there be a falling away. Look at the, the second thing. And the man of sin be revealed. <coughs> I believe he's in the White House. I'm not saying he's the Antichrist. But if he ain't, he's a forerunner. The man of sin be revealed. Have you ever known any president that just get up on national television and lie like a dog to the American people? Have you ever, ever heard of a president that's ever done that? Jesus. I mean, uh, Paul was telling them the day of Christ is at hand. But there's going to be a, a falling in way at first and sin be revealed. Look at verse 9. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs, and there that word lying. Have you ever seen our Congress in the shape it's in these days? They don't lie about anything. They lie about Benghazi. They lie to us daily. Wicked bunch of people. 
that's in the White House, they don't know God. They don't want to know God. Let me show you why they don't want to know God. Verse number 10, with all deceitful, deceivableness, our White House is deceiving the American people coming and going. We've never seen that. Now, it's always been, it's always been crooks in politics. You don't believe it, they go on a pauper, come out a millionaire. All right? Because they receive not the love of the truth that they might be saved. That's the reason they're like that. Look at verse 12. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Paul was saying that the day is at hand. This describes our nation. This describes our White House. This describes uh, uh, our political realm right here. Paul is describing it. He didn't even know what he was talking about. All he knows is God said, write it down. <laughs> Pleasure in unrighteousness. But now here's the invitation. Verse number 13. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren, beloved of the Lord, because God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation. Could I tell you God would that everyone be saved? From the beginning, God chose you to be saved. But He's not going to force it upon you. Listen here. God has from the beginning chosen you to salvation through what? Sanctification of the Spirit and belief of the truth. How must a man be saved? The Holy Spirit deals with your heart and you believe the truth. Verse number 15, Therefore, brothers, stand fast. Hold the traditions which have been taught. I'm not talking about this latter day movement. I'm talking about the old tradition. Now, verse number 16, uh, 17, comfort your hearts and establish you in every good works. Uh, chapter 3, verse number 3, but the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Miss Melvin comes this morning, gives us a stamp of invitation. Listen, Jesus is at the door. We've seen what He said when He was on earth. We've seen what His apostles said. Even though they did not understand. You say, why did they not understand? Then, well, did the apostles understand when Jesus told them that He had to die for their sin? Peter said, not so, Lord. Not so. But Peter finally found out the real truth in it. God had these things written. The, the, the apostles wrote these things down. And now in our day and time as we stand to our feet, we're there. We're there, church. We're there. And here's what I'm going to say. What are you doing for Christ? <coughs> Are you going to be able to stand before Christ when He comes unashamed? What are you going to say when Jesus calls the church up? Well, if you're saved, amen, that's good enough. 